हाई एवरी वन वेलकम टू एस नी पी सी बी अकेडमी माई नेम इज़ अफिरल सिक्योरिटी अरोरा सेवेंटीन पॉइंट फोर प्रोवाइड वर्क फ्लो टू डू रिफ्लेक्शन एनालिसिस इन दिस वीडियो आई गो ओवर स्टेप बाई स्टेप प्रोसेस टू डू रिफ्लेक्शन एनालिसिस इन डी डी आर टू इंटरफेस विल सी हाउ टू एक्सट्रैक्ट टोपोलॉजी इन टोपोलॉजी एक्सप्लोर सेवेंटीन पॉइंट फोर आफ्टर दैट वी विल डिस्कस हाउ टू पुट लॉसी ट्रांसमिशन लाइन्स टू मेक सिमुलेशन मोर एक्यूरेट For all of this, I'm going to use Security Aurora 17.4 license. So let's get started. This is section one of pre-layout reflection analysis of DDR2 interface. In this section, we will learn how to run design setup workflow, how to edit cross section and add customized layer stack up. then we will see how we can add voltages to dc nets and at last of this section we will define component classes in the very first step we will run security aurora 17.4 from cadence program menu and open the board file which is stratix2 development board you can download the same board file from the link given in the description after opening the board file in the next step we'll set up design workflow to do it first we have to open the workflow manager if it is not already opened you can go to analyze and select workflow manager from here once the workflow manager is open you have to select design setup workflow from the drop down menu now we are good to go for editing cross section to do that select define cross section link from the workflow manager Once the cross section editor will open you can add stack up recommended by manufacturer or you can create a stack up from scratch in this case i have to change few information here so i'm going to do that quickly all right once all the changes are done we'll click over apply and okay so after editing or creating your stack up we are good to go for applying dc net To do that click on identify dc net link from the workflow manager and here we have to select all the nets on which we wanted to assign the voltages in our case we are going to assign the voltage for vo-9 net once the net will show up in the window you have to select it to assign the voltages and then click over apply as you can see the voltage is updated now now here you can ask why i am assigning 0.9 volt to this net so in this case i am going to demonstrate reflection on parallel data bus 0 and which has a 0.9 volt pull up resistor that is why i am assigning voltage to only net but in your case you have to assign voltages to all the nets that you wanted to simulate now click on okay to apply all the changes Now before moving further for topology extraction we have to verify the component classes assigned to different active and passive components which is very important because through these classes security aurora recognize different components to verify that we have to go to tools go to the quick reports and from here you have to select bill of material report condensed once you do that you'll see this kind of table and here few components have wrong component class assigned but we have to verify for only those components which we wanted to simulate so in our case i just wanted to verify register pack the search res pack so as you can see this 16 pin smd register pack has wrong component class ic so let's update component classes first we are going to close it and click over setup component once you do that we'll get this sort of window and here we'll see all these three category io ic and discrete and here we have to add reference designator which we have used in the topology so i'm going to add it quickly in case of io we have to add xu asterisk and in case of discrete component rn asterisk all right once you do that click over apply and here we'll get all the change list let's close it and okay now we can simply verify by following the same process go to tools quick reports bill of material condensed and just search for same register pack and as you can see it's updated to discrete component class now let's close it and we are good to go for topology extraction this is section 2 of pre layout reflection analysis 
In this section, we will learn how to set up analysis preferences and extract topology on Topology Explorer 17.4. So we will start with setting up a topology for extraction. To do that, we'll go to setup, go to constraint and from here you have to select electrical constraint to open constraint manager. And once the constraint manager is open, we can set the preferences to extract topology. To do that, click over tool and select options. Once you do that, a option form will open. And from here, you have to make sure you have selected extract for simulation and include routed interconnects. Now, what are these options? So when you select extract for simulation, it will extract topology to run any simulation or analysis. And once you uncheck that, it will extract the topology for constraint float planning. Similarly, include routed interconnects. So when we check include routed interconnect, it would include lossy transmission lines if you have routed the design. But in our case, this option is doesn't matter because we haven't routed any connection and we are going for pre layout analysis. But here I would recommend check that option if you are extracting a topology for post layout analysis and click on OK. Now we are good to go for topology extraction. To do that, make sure you are inside the wiring spreadsheet. And from here you have to select parallel data zero right click and click over topology explorer here a message will pop up to remind you that models are not assigned yet we are going to assign models in topology explorer 17.4 directly so you can ignore it and click on no and here we go we have extracted parallel data zero net from board file now in topology explorer canvas we can run any simulation we want Next, I am going to introduce you to properties of transmission lines and what are these components in the topology. So first thing is double click on any transmission line, let's say TL1. And here you can see it has time delay 2.3 nanoseconds. So how software got this value? Because I haven't routed any connection in our design. So this value is based on Manhattan connection between the component. So it depends on where we have placed it on a board file. Similarly for TL2. Now let's see what are all these components in the topology. So first we have U7, which is a FPGA controller. And it is connected to XU2, which is a DIMM module connector pin. And further it is connected to RN32, which is a 0.9 volt pull up register that I have talked about already. All right, I guess this is enough introduction. Now let's go for IBIS model assignment to FPGA controller, which is U7. Now to assign an IBIS model, you have to just double click over U7. And as you can see, we have a default model assigned as of now. To replace it with the correct IBIS model, you have to double click here, click over browse button. And from here, you can locate where that IBIS model is saved. So in this case, you can download the IBIS model file from the link given in the description. So I'm going to assign IBIS model quickly. So once the IBIS model are assigned, make sure D6 pin should be selected because we are going to simulate D6 pin only and then click on OK. Once the IBIS model are assigned, you can verify it from here. To increase the size of the text, you have to just select the text, right click and from here you can increase the size. Now before moving further, I just want to adjust the topology. So I'm just going to do that quickly. Now let's move to section three. There we will learn more about topology and what is the need of driver and receiver pair. How to manually add components in the topology and finally run the simulation with lossless transmission line models. So as we have already discussed in previous section, how this topology is created to visualize it better, you can refer to this image. So we have memory controller in our case, it is U7 and ABC are the transmission lines and we have R as a pull-up register, which is connected to VTT. And between B and C, we have a DIMM module connector. All right. So here A is the length between die and package. B is between package and DIMM module connector. And C is between connector and register. So you can visualize using this image, how the whole system is connected. And in our case, the value of B and C is based on Manhattan connection because we have just placed the component. All right, so from there we got to know, so this is a kind of transmitter side of the whole system. 
we have to place a dim module or a memory module on this dim connector then our system will complete so there will be one more circuit that we have to add and that will be the receiver side all right so let's see what that circuit is and as you can see we have to connect these more component to create a receiver side of the topology so here we have memory device x and y are the transmission lines and we have a series register which is connected between memory and connector all right so we have to add those as well in our topology now let's go back to topology explorer to add the element we'll go to add block menu and from here we have to select register transmission line and io ibis model so first we'll place io ibis model so that will be our memory module to place a register you have to go to ideal elements right click and select register from here and we have to place two transmission lines which we can select from here so one will be at this side and same we can copy and paste at other side now i'm just going to connect these components quickly all right so as you can see we have placed the other side of the connector which is our dim memory side in the next step as we have assigned ibis model to fpga controller similarly we're going to assign for io model to do that you have to select it double click here browse for the model select the memory dram ibs model and click on open in this case make sure you have selected c2 pin which is dq1 dq full model and click on okay once it is done you can just select the text and make its bigger font and place it somewhere here now i'm going to change the reference designator for all the components which you can do that by selecting the text so this will be our control data all right so till here we have updated all the reference designator now as per specification the value of r2 should be 22 ohm so you have to just select the component and from here you can change its value to 22 now we are good to go for setting up transmitter and stimulus pattern so first i'll make sure fpga controller should configured as transmitter so as you can see it is configured at receiver now to change its configuration you have to just select the control data block right click and click on make transmitter so as you can see the block is changed to transmitter now and dim data is already configured as receiver to add the stimulus parameters on transmitter you have to click over set analysis option link from the workflow and here you have to enter data rate number of bits and what should be the stimulus pattern so in our case data rate is 0.532 gbps number of bits will be 532 and we are going to configure stimulus pattern as random pattern to do that you have to right click here and click over define pattern and from here make sure random is selected click on preview and okay now why i am using 0.532 gbps or 532 megahertz it is just because the clock frequency is 266 megahertz for ddr2 interface and in case of ddr we send data at rising and falling edge both so that's why data rate for parallel data bus 0 is twice the clock frequency now after setting all the stimulus parameters we have to check the connectivity between transmitter and receiver to do that you have to click over check connectivity link from the workflow and click on check button so as you can see the connection is verified between dim data c2 pin and control data d6 and our topology is ready for simulation to run the transient analysis you have to click over start transient analysis link from the workflow all right so once you do that you can just zoom in the waveform using this button and as you can see there's lot of reflection on the line so the main reason of this reflection is we are using lossless transmission line and default model of connector pin so in the next part of pre layout reflection analysis we are going to replace dim module connector with a spice model and lossless transmission line with the lossy ones so our simulation will be more accurate and more realistic that will discuss in part 2 of pre layout reflection analysis video let me know in case of any questions in the comment section see you in the next video